So first of all, a pleasant good morning and thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Nikolai Edwards. I am the Vice Chairperson Policy, Advocacy and Projects of the Commonwealth Youth Council. Uh, to my left, I have uh, Simone Phillip, who is the Executive Secretary of the Trinidad Youth Council. And to my right, I have uh, Mr. Michael Rajnath, who is the Vice President of the UE St. Augustine Guild of Students. Now, the purpose of this press conference is to highlight the Global Youth Development Index that was released by the Commonwealth Secretariat on October 21st. Now, this is the second iteration of the uh, YDI, as it is known, uh, the first being in 2013. So this is the second time, uh, and this time around, they have looked at the youth development uh, indices of 183 countries throughout the world. So that will be both Commonwealth countries and and external countries and the findings would have uh, looked at a number of areas when it comes to youth development and made uh, a certain ranking. Trinidad and Tobago currently places 84th out of 183 countries when it comes to youth development index. Uh, the report highlights that the largest period of youth development was between 2010 and 2015. Uh, now, this is significant because we're now in 2016 moving forward and we have seen a stagnation in many areas when it comes to youth development. We are noticing in Trinidad and Tobago that many youth groups no longer receive the subventions that they once received because of our economic situation uh, but we want to send a strong clear signal that despite these uh, cutbacks and what have you we should be investing heavily in young people as young people will be the ones to take over the reins of power would be the ones to lead our corporations our entities uh, in the future so now is that period for grooming and ensuring that this is done uh, effectively and in the best interest of the country at large now I would like to say that while we have improved in terms of our actual score uh, on the Youth Development Index, we are not able to compare the results of this time around to the results of the last Youth Development Index uh, because a number of domains would have been added this time around. So it would be unfair to, to compare it. Uh, the Commonwealth the uses uh, the age group 15 to 29 uh, to categorize a person as being a youth. Now we have throughout the uh, different regions and, and different organizations uh, different definitions of a youth. For instance, as I said, Commonwealth 15 to 29, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO 15 to 24, International Labor Office, ILO 15 to 24 as well, UN Habitat or the Youth Fund 15 to 32, the UN Population Fund 10 to 24, the World Health Organization 10 to 29, the World Bank 15 to 34, the African Union 15 to 39, and the European Union union 15 to 29 um, I would like to as well point out the domains of the youth development index being education health and well-being employment and opportunity civic participation and political participation so these are the five domains that we've used uh, to gather information to make a determination of Trinidad and Tobago's standing when it comes to the global youth development I have since attaining the position of Vice Chairperson Policy, Advocacy and Projects of the Commonwealth Youth Council, uh, which I attained in November 2015 at the General Assembly of the Commonwealth Youth Forum. Um, since then, I've spoken to the Minister of Sport and Youth Affairs, as well as to the President uh, of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and highlighted a number of concerns as it relates to young people in Trinidad and Tobago and raising our profile. Um, now, it's sad to report that since the, those conversations, I have not seen any marked improvement or, or, or willingness to assist young people in the manner in which uh, we deserve to be assisted. Now, I do have a meeting uh, scheduled, well, I'm currently waiting on a date uh, for this week to meet with the Minister of Sport and Youth Affairs as well as to the President to present these 10 um, tangible uh, solutions to improve the youth profile of Trinidad and Tobago. So I'll quickly just read them out for you. Uh, number one, 
the appointment of youth ambassadors to the Commonwealth, United Nations, and CARICOM. Number two, greater support for youth wishing to attend regional and international conferences representing Trinidad and Tobago. Number three, greater emphasis on recognizing young people's achievements and contributions to national development, culture and the arts, sports, education, volunteerism, the environment, social dialogue, and advocacy. Number four, reservation of a percentage of jobs and opportunities for youth within the public and private sectors. And number five, the re-establishment of the National Youth Council of Trinidad and Tobago by merger of the current Trinidad Youth Council and Tobago Youth Council. Number six, strong support for a National Students Association to represent students at the primary, secondary, and tertiary levels, which should lead to stronger support for student councils within all educational institutions. Number seven, a youth innovation fund to support youth-led projects and initiatives. Number eight, a stronger year-long national youth parliament program with sit-ins once a month to debate issues for consideration by the elected members of parliament. Number nine, a move from youth policies to youth laws. And finally, number 10, support for a local website that makes information on all youth groups available, as well as provides information on events and projects being undertaken. Um, I would just go into the recommendations in a bit more detail. So number one, the appointment of youth ambassadors to the Commonwealth, United Nations and CARICOM. Currently, Trinidad and Tobago does not have any youth ambassadors to any of these organizations, and this has been the case for some time now. Um, and it is really sad because when we do not have representatives at, at these organizations, we do not have voting privileges. We do not have an opportunity to properly articulate on behalf of the youth of Trinidad and Tobago our concerns, our issues, and our recommendations. Uh, usually when I attend these uh, conferences as part of the Commonwealth Youth Council, I'm ashamed to see the level of representation of many of our neighboring countries and the lack of representation when it comes to Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, many persons would think that I am the youth ambassador to the Commonwealth on behalf of Trinidad and Tobago, and that is not the case. When I contested the uh, the elections for this position, I did so on my own volition. Got no funding from the government. Um, I had to rely on private sector funds, including support, strong support from the University of the West Indies. So I would like to make a clear point that we need to, in short stead, appoint persons to these positions. And this can be done by young persons nominating their peers. Uh, and the Ministry of Sport and Youth Affairs compiling or putting together a panel to adjudicate over persons to to see who would best serve in what capacities. Greater support for youth wishing to attend regional and international conferences representing Trinidad and Tobago. We have a big problem when it comes to young persons being supported, especially financially, to attend many of these conferences. We see funds being quickly dispensed for persons involved in sports and even in some cases culture and the arts. But when it comes to leadership summits and conferences, when it comes to uh, capacity building uh, seminars, we do not see the same level of uh, funds and support being put behind young people. And we are seeing that sports and culture and the arts are not the only investment means when it comes to supporting young people in Trinidad and Tobago. We are far more diverse and especially not everyone participates in, in sporting and culture and arts activities. So persons may want to go uh, to be a part of a debate. Persons may want to go and lend their voice to certain human rights issues and other things, and we believe that a fair opportunity should be given to them. And this is where we're calling on both the public and private sectors to put forward uh, funds to ensure that young people are able to attend these conferences. Next, greater emphasis on recognizing young people's achievements and contributions to national development, culture and the arts, sports, education, volunteerism, the environment, social dialogue and advocacy. We have a problem when it comes to recognizing persons because we solely do it mainly uh, on the basis of academic performance. When it comes to the President's Medal, when it comes to a lot of the private sector um, 
recognitions it's really along the lines of academics and we're saying that not everyone is uh, as academically inclined as the other person uh, so a fair opportunity should be to recognize persons in other spheres um, which I named uh, previously so for instance we have the National Youth Awards which this year 2016 was not even hosted and that is a problem because we can afford to host the national awards but in recognizing young people's contribution we do not have the same um, mindset to ensure that these events pull off. So we want to make a strong recommendation that the president, uh, for his president's medal, uh, it broadens the categories uh, for receipt of this medal, as well as to ensure that a budgetary allocation is made every year towards the National Youth Awards to ensure that it pulls off successfully. Also, we want to call on the private sector to host similar events of recognition for young people. We want to make a further recommendation that the national awards should incorporate a category for youth um, community and civic engagement. So where young people strive in these areas, award, an award should be provided to them. Number four, reservation of a percentage of jobs and opportunities for youth within the public and private sectors. Trinidad and Tobago currently ranks among the 10 lowest scoring countries in the Global Youth Development Index when it comes to employment and opportunity. Um, and we see each day young persons are losing their jobs and there is no job security. We have a problem with contract work for young professionals, which is a deterrent because at the end of your contract, you are unsure whether you would be renewed or not. Not. And we should not have young people um, waiting with bated breath as to what their future may look like. This also is a problem when young people want to access jo uh, mortgages, when they want to purchase vehicles and things of the sort to have a um, to go to the bank. This is a huge problem. Uh, so we want to ensure that these uh, contract work type environments are demolished, and we ensure that persons once again return to permanent jobs or something with a lot more longevity. Number five, the re-establishment of the National Youth Council of Trinidad and Tobago by merger of the current Trinidad Youth Council and Tobago Youth Council. Currently, we do not have uh, a properly recognized National Youth Council in Trinidad and Tobago. The problem is that uh, back in 2011, I believe, it was alleged that the Ministry of Youth and Sports uh, defunded the National Youth Council because of allegations of corruption um, at, at that level. And since then, we have not had a fully established executive of the NYCTT and this poses a lot of problems when it comes to the selection of persons to represent Trinidad and Tobago at uh, different uh, conferences and forums. So I have spoken with both the Trinidad Youth Council and the Tobago Youth Council and presented the idea of a merger between both youth councils in the interest of being recognized as the National Youth Council. Um, both organizations ha are currently entertaining the idea and I can just simply wait to see what the result of that would be. But I believe that they're both functioning, um, they're both serving the interest of young people, but they're right now in the capacity as a non-governmental non organization, and they should be recognized with higher esteem uh, advocating on behalf of young people. Strong support for our National Students Association to represent students at the primary, secondary, and tertiary levels, which should lead to stronger support for student councils within all educational institutions. When you look at a lot of other countries, we see them having strong National Students Associations. Um, the National Student Association would be one to ensure that when there comes the issue of curriculum reform um, to changes to the syllabus uh, and other things as relates to education, young people have a strong voice on that uh, on that platform as well as at the tertiary level you would have persons from all different backgrounds and different age groups who are in tertiary education being well represented so it's time that we move to that where we have a well respected and recognized national student association as well as student councils and guilds in all of our educational institutions uh, this would ensure that there is leadership development this would ensure that persons are adequately represented across the board <laughs> 
a youth innovation fund to support youth-led projects and initiatives. We believe this is very important to ensure that uh, innovation and research is encouraged because there are a number of young people who are at the university level who have come up with great plans and ideas, but there is no sense of application because they do not have the funding, they do not have the support. So we believe that each year um, contributions should be made through the budget to this Youth Innovation Fund to support young people uh, to realize their fullest potential because we have a number of issues in Trinidad and Tobago that can be solved by our very own human resource based on their ideas. So we think this is very important and the private sector should be encouraged to contribute to that fund as well. Uh, a stronger year-long national youth parliament program with sittings once a month to debate issues for consideration by the elected members of parliament. Uh, the current format of the national youth parliament seems to be very experiential and not impactful as it ought to be. Uh, I believe that there should be more frequent sittings of the national youth parliament and it should be a year-long uh, program for the persons involved in that. Once we have more frequent sittings of the national youth parliament, these uh, issues or, or topics that come up for debate should be considered by the elected members of parliament. This would ensure that the results of the National Youth Parliament are impactful, that they inform our policies and laws, and ensure that young people are well represented um, by another body of exceptional young people. So I really want to encourage uh, the National Youth Parliament program uh, to adapt to our current realities, and we see in many other, uh, other jurisdictions, such as Jamaica, where there is strong respect and recognition of the National Youth Parliament there. Number nine, a move from youth policies to youth laws. Uh, youth policies are promises of things that a government uh, intend to do. Uh, and we think that while that is well and good, there should be more concrete uh, solutions to a number of problems. The fact is that not all youth policies translate into youth laws, and not all the time governments see youth policies as being uh, extremely important to youth development. So we need to adopt a mindset that we want to have more youth-focused laws in Trinidad and Tobago that recognize young people and not have them simply as uh, as as third class citizens so to say we believe that young people are not problems to be dealt with but rather solutions to be harnessed and and we think that if there are youth laws in place laws that deal with let's say juvenile delinquency uh, at another level um, we also have things to ensure that young people are incorporated in the decision making processes such as uh, young people being put on state boards, for instance. These things can ensure that young people have a better voice and we're not engaged simply when it comes to election time because that has been the trend in Trinidad and Tobago. When the election bell is rung, then we see uh, political parties coming to the fore and remembering that there are young people in Trinidad and Tobago. And this should not be the case if we intend to develop our youth sector. And finally, support for a local website that makes information on all youth groups available as well as provides information on events and projects being undertaken. Now, this is important to ensure connectivity. We have so many youth groups across Trinidad and Tobago who are doing the same work over and over. And if we really want to engage young people and ensure that we are serious about youth work, then we need to be connected as far as possible. We need to ensure that the information is readily available, that persons have access access, uh, be it by contact details, uh, to know of events taking place so that even the private sector and public sector can ensure funds are dispersed uh, equitably uh, to ensure that young people get the most out of our representation as far as possible. So we think that anyone from the public sector or private sector should come forward and assist us with establishing this website to deal with the issues affecting youth across Trinidad and Tobago. So with these points, we do think that they are practical. We do think that they can be implemented in very short periods of time. Um, and we really want to encourage people to remember that young people have the potential to excel but sometimes you need uh, a push you need an enabling environment to ensure that young people's potential are fully realized um 
right now i can say that young people in trinidad and tobago are depressed with the current state we have no real sense of confidence in the way things are done in this country especially as it relates to young people we have no real sense of understanding of a lot of the motives behind um, certain decisions that are taking place currently um, that affect young people and affect the country as, uh, as a whole we have so many persons graduating from the university of the west indies from the university of trinidad and tobago from costat from usc and all our tertiary in institutions but how are they being effectively engaged to contribute to uh, a national dialogue or to national development but yet we see so many times young people are being picked on or, or being highly criticized but we're not being given the proper tools and guidance to ensure our fullest potential uh, so that would be my statements on on this matter and at this point i would want to hand over over to my colleague from the Trinidad Youth Council. Hi, good morning everyone. Hi. Um, as you all know, the Trinidad Youth Council is a youth-led organization that promotes youth development through capacity building, education and training, youth participation and advocacy. By reading this Youth Development Index, we understand that it has increased between the years of 2010 to 2015. However, we know that there is more to be done significantly to increase these figures. The five criteria that, that was mentioned, education and health, education, health and wellness, civic participation, employment, and political participation, it is a great proxy of how young people are doing across their lives. However, in Trinidad and Tobago, how well, how well is this being documented? As we all know, our um, CSO, um, Central Statistical Office has been non-functional for some period of time. This index took information on a national level. Where did they get the information from? Is it a true representation of how the young people of Trinidad and Tobago are, are being represented at this time? When we speak about education, education has given us a lot over the past few years. There has been plenty, there has been a lot of increases in terms of um, free education throughout um, primary, secondary, and tertiary level. But how about implementation of the ed education um, received? Are there proper opportunities? They talk about employment opportunities. There's a lot of under youth unemployment and also youth underemployment. Um, in the areas of health and wellness, our mental health is a serious issue. Um, there's still talk about HFLE in schools, sex education in schools. Why is that still being a topic of conversation and not being implemented in our schools? This is things that young people have to have ac access and proper knowledge of. Um, in addition to our system of seniority in terms of underemployment and employment, we have a system of seniority. If you don't reach a certain age, you're not given the opportunity, even though if you're qualified or not. If you're not of a certain age, you're not given the opportunity, and we want more opportunities for young people. We're not talking about only young people who have tertiary education. We're talking about young people who have barely secondary education, access to who have um, entry level. They need opportunities to expand their horizon. Um, um, basic um, education is important, but also given the opportunity for um, other opportunities. Sorry. Um, Trinidad uh, Council over the years ex executed a number of projects to increase capacity of young people. We promote youth empowerment, as I mentioned, through our Take a Seat, Take a Stand project, our Building Future Leaders projects, and our Peer Mediation project. These projects afford young people the opportunity to express themselves in different avenues. So we want the, to be involved, actively involved in the decision-making process. As Nikolai mentioned, the 10 um, recommendations that he put forward, we want the government and the public at hand to take these recommendations seriously. And we want young people to lobby and advocate for these, for these recommendations as well, because we want that uh, we want to have a nation that is youth driven. Youth are not the future, we are the now, and we have to be taken very seriously in moving forward. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, colleagues. Now, to, and I must say, excellent points by Nikolai and a um, colleague from TYC. But to bring things down to a university perspective now, 
a tertiary student level perspective, we have a number of students graduating each and every year, thousands of students graduating from all, all faculties at the UWI. And we have a phenomenon occurring where we graduate into unemployment. And with this, this um, report done by the Commonwealth. The, the Commonwealth, where we scored the 10 lowest countries for employment and opportunity, the score of, with a rank actually of 179, an overall youth development index <laughs> rank of 84. We have a serious problem where all of our graduates spend three, four, five years at the UWI and come out into the workplace and we just can't get a job. So the, the, the problem is we just not being given the opportunity to contribute to the country. And then sometimes we come under criticism for not participating or contributing or, 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 or giving back to the country that has given us so much. When in reality, we're not being given the opportunity. Even, even myself as vice president, I have a number of students coming to me. We just home. We home, we graduate, okay, we cross the stage. What next? Is it masters because we can't get a job? We just come back and do a masters. A lot of the time, students take that route. You just come back to do a masters because you just can't get a job. We just can't find jobs in the country right now, and that that that's a serious problem that I wanted to to highlight as a as a final year student actually that about to graduate. What 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 what, what the future holds is is is, is very bleak. And one thing I wanted to add to Nikolai points were reservation of, of spots on all state boards or, or, or private sector boards where, where the state would have influence over for, for youth representatives to, be, to, to have a place on. So let me, let me just take, for example, hypothetically, let me just say YTEP. We would reserve two spots for a youth representative there and so on and so on for other... Um, State, state boards. And basically that, that's what I wanted to add with the serious level of the unemployment phenomena that happening in this country. Not phenomena, the reality where we graduate into unemployment. And that, that's, a, that's a serious case where we need to address as a nation because we have all of these youths just at home, on the block, wherever else, we just not being properly harnessed. And that contributes to all of the negative um, problems that we face as a nation, crime, poverty, all of these issues stem from unemployment. And some of us, we tackle the, the issue of, um, of youth participation and youth involvement from a wrong perspective when we had the whole situation of the gate reform, where claims were made that the students come to the university and waste the gate, as they say. And when we come back out into the workplace, where we are so fortunate for having gate, we just again not given the opportunity to give back to the country. And some students who took who would have taken loans, uh, who would have accessed the help loans, they don't have the job to basically repay the loans. And sometimes they have a loan, and their parents have to be repaying the loans on them because they just can't find employment after they graduate. Now. Bear that in mind, I think we need to take more serious steps as a nation, as a government, as a region to actively engage our youth population because we, we have the potential, we have the skill, we have the qualifications. And some people make the argument that you're not mature enough, you're not old enough, you're not experienced enough. How are we to get the experience without the opportunity being given to us? And and that, that, that's, a, that's a serious case where we wanted to highlight here today. And it's reflected here in the Commonwealth report where it's very disappointing to see that we rank at the 10 lowest scoring countries for youth employment and opportunity. So that, that's all I wanted to add. And I wanted to reiterate that we graduate into unemployment in this day and age. So, thank you. Um,
I would just like to once again reiterate that uh, we believe and uh, we all here are authorities when it comes to or represent authorities when it comes to youth in Trinidad and Tobago uh, and myself youth uh, throughout the Commonwealth uh, that better can be done when it comes to youth engagement when it comes to youth development especially in Trinidad and Tobago we do have the resources uh, mind the fact that we are going through a recession we do have the resources to invest in young people sometimes it's not simply financial resources but time effort and energy to ensure that young people's fullest potential uh, is harvested uh, and bolstered through uh, engagement political participation and other means of worthwhile contribution to national development uh, so I would like to say thank you uh, and if you have any questions we'd be more than happy to facilitate sure Sure. I'm sure the recommendations have had an origin. Yeah. Could you just give a background to Sure. Now, these recommendations uh, would be in line with best practices internationally when it comes to youth engagement. For instance, um, you see all these countries having an established uh, National Youth Council, uh, National Students Association. You see awards and recognitions being uh, given in broad categories uh, from the head of state uh, to the ministry responsible for youth. Um, you see in many jurisdictions websites where you can find all of this information. So these uh, recommendations would have been pulled from the experiences of other countries. Uh, I'd use, like to use the example of even St. Lucia, where their National Youth Council is legislated for. We are still to the point where our National Youth Council is not legislated for. And what that means is that our National Youth Council can be sidelined at any point by the government if they so choose. Uh, in St. Lucia, the government has to go to the National Youth Council for its views and opinions as it relates to young people's um, experiences and the impact that, that policies and legislation would have on young people. Um, these recommendations would have been um, brought to the Trinidad Youth Council, to the Tobago Youth Council, to a number of other youth groups, um, both locally and regionally, as well as to the Guild of Students. Uh, so there is strong support for these recommendations, and the fact is there are a number of other recommendations, but we feel as though these recommendations are priority and can be done in a short period of time. Yes. So, as I was saying, these. Yeah. Sure. No problem. So, if you notice behind me, the Trinidad, uh, Trinidad and Tobago Youth Convention. Um, this was hosted at the Center of Excellence uh, in August of this year, uh, and it provided a platform for young people to come forward and share their views, their opinions, and we took those views and opinions into consideration. And those views and opinions concretized these recommendations because we will be able to um, to theme them and ensure that they are well done. Documented. So we have these recommendations coming from a grassroots level as well um, on behalf of the Trinidad Youth Council, which has an extensive um, period of, of, of time in existence. Um, so those would be their experiences as well as Tobago Youth Council and the University of the West Indies students. I as well served as a member of the Guild of Students and I would have been informed by a lot of the recommendations being put forward. So it's not simply just a matter of us pulling from international experience or regional experiences but we have had these conversations with young people uh, and these are the things that young people do want to see and are in the best interest of young people yeah. all right so we thank you for taking the time to be here uh, this morning uh, and we would be available for future comment uh, on any of these topics but better can be done when it comes to youth in Trinidad and Tobago thank you <laughs>